It's time for praise and worship. I said it's time for praise and worship. I shouldn't have to come here in the morning, this morning, to pump you, to prime you on how good God has been to you. Hallelujah. So is it all right if we praise the Lord?
worship this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because can't nobody do you like Jesus. I say, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Selena can't do you like Jesus, baby. I may let you down. But God is too good. He'll never fail you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. I say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. How about you give God just a shout of praise? Come on, you can do better than that. Come on and just give God a shout of praise. Come on, if you know that you know that you know. Amen. There can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Come on and give him a shout of praise right where you are. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, I am so excited, amen, that our worship and praise ministry took us down. Amen into a Holy Ghost good time on this morning. Amen. I don't know about you, but the Bible says that he is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Listen, I am excited to greet you. Amen. And to be in the house of God on this morning. Uh, because, amen, the song really is true. There's nobody. There's nobody. There's nothing and nobody that can do you like the Lord. But God loves us. God loves you. God has great plans for your life. And I'm excited, amen, about this day and for all that God has in store for each and every one of you. Can't nobody. Amen. I, I'm trying to let that go, but I just like it. Amen. Can't nobody. Amen. Some of us, we've tried a whole lot of things. Amen. But we found that can't nobody do us like the Lord. I come to you on this morning as we get ready to go to God in prayer. We have a number of names that are on our prayer list. Amen. But here is the shout of the morning to all of you whose names may be on this prayer list. That was a good message for you. Nobody and nothing can do you like the Lord. We want to lift up the family of our brother, uh, Brother Ortega Gilmore. Uh, brother Gilmore is, was a member of uh, Free Will. He has served here for a number of years. Uh, anytime we needed help with something, he would often sign up and register to, to be a part. Uh, but on Friday, uh, we learned that Brother Ortega uh, succumbed to some complications uh, from the coronavirus and he has gone on uh, to be with the Lord. We've talked with his sister Janie. Uh, they're in the process of making plans uh, for a homegoing service, uh, but we want you, Free Will, to, to lift up, amen, that family of our dear brother Ortega Gilmore, believing, amen, that God's comfort would be upon each and every one of them. We want to continue to pray for Sister Felita Poole uh, and family. Uh, late last week, 
Uh, they suffered the loss of their grandmother. Uh, but here is the shout. Uh, God allowed their grandmother uh, to be 101 years old. Amen. Talk about longevity. Uh, and so we bl uh, bless God for her long life. Uh, but we certainly want to continue to lift up the Poole family uh, and that entire family. Amen. As they continue to grapple with the loss of their loved one. Hey, we want to continue to lift up uh, our dear sister, young Raven Acoff, uh, who is continuing to trust and believe God for total and complete healing. We also want to lift up Sister Ella Ruth Lee, also believing God for healing. Uh, she has a few chemo, uh, chemotherapy treatments to go, uh, but she is in good spirits and she is trusting God uh, for her complete healing and her complete wholeness. Amen. Sister Ella, we are touching and agreeing with you in the spirit, believing the same. We want to pray for our brother, uh, brother Coco Court. Uh, that was a freak accident uh, that he had. He fell and broke a few bones in his face and in his knees. Uh, he's home now recovering, uh, but in my last conversation with him, he's had a few uh, rough nights, and so we want to believe that God's peace uh, would be upon him uh, that will allow him a good night's rest. We want to pray for Sister Angela Cotton. Uh, she is the wife of one of our deacons, uh, Deacon Johnny Cotton. Angela uh, unfortunately contracted uh, coronavirus, but praise God, she is home. She is feeling much better. Amen. Come on and give God some praise for that shout. Uh, she's feeling much better. She's quarantined away from the rest of the family. Thank God none of them tested positive, uh, but she is in good spirits, and we're believing that God will continue to restore and heal her. We want to pray uh, for Sister Etna Walker, who will soon be uh, suffering surgery. We want to pray for Sister uh, Vermitria uh, Watkins. Uh, Sister Watkins suffered surgery late last week, but I understand that she is doing well uh, and she will be uh, leaving the hospital uh, any day now. So come on and give God some praise for that. We're looking forward, amen, to her release. And finally, we want to continue to lift up Sister Nett Johnson along with Sister Jean Stovall. Both of those ladies were hospitalized on last week, but they are now home recovering and doing well. I thought somebody would have got excited excited about that. Amen. That's a praise report that God is able to heal and God is able to restore. Listen, whether I called your name or not, whether your name is on this list or perhaps, amen, it may not have made the list. Can I tell you, God knows exactly what you need. And not only does God know what you need, but God is here ready and able to answer each and every one of your prayers. So right now where you are, if you would bow your heads and close your eyes as together, we bombard heaven, call on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right where you are, Father, it is a blessing. God, it is our honor to be in your presence and to sit at your feet. God, we, we know that at, in your presence, your word reminds us that there is fullness of joy. We know, God, that in your presence, our lives will never be the same. God, we know that, that all we need is just a touch from you. Because, God, a touch from you will make everything all right. So, God, for all of those names that we've lifted on our prayer list, God, I thank you that you've already gone ahead of us. You knew the names before I called them, and you knew, oh God, and you know exactly what they stand in need of. So God, we pray now that you meet them at the points of their needs. We pray, God, that you would do a great and a mighty work, Father, that even in this day we will continue to see miracles, signs, and wonders. We are believing by faith and trusting you, O oh God, that, that, that your word reminds us that, that, that we've been young and now we're old, but we've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, I see begging bread, which, which means simply, God, that you take care of your children. And so, God, we thank you for that right now. Father, we pray now that your spirit would be in these services. God, we thank you that our praise team has already led us into your presence now, God, we pray that we will continue to offer praises unto your name that will magnify you, that will glorify you, that will edify you. 
God, we cast aside every distraction, everything that's not like you. Father, we center our hearts, we center our minds, and we center our spirits that we are in line in worship to you. Now, God, we bless you. Now, God, we believe in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit that healing is already ours. Deliverance and breakthrough, it's already ours. Everything, every desire of our heart, you said that you would give it to us if it lines up with your will. And so, God, right now, we say thank you as we claim the victory. In the mighty and the powerful name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, I pray, amen, that wherever you are, that you have felt and that you are continuing to feel the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, it is my honor, it is my privilege, I am so excited to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Free Will family, we want to welcome you here to our virtual services. Listen, I am, again, you, I keep saying it because I really am, I really am excited that you have joined us on this day. Whether you're tuning in through our YouTube channel, maybe you're watching us on Facebook Live, Regardless of how you've tuned in, listen, we are truly excited that you are worshiping with us on today. Hey, you already know what I'm going to do. Hey, what, what, what I'm going to ask you to do is three things. I want you to call a friend, text a friend, tag a friend. Y'all already know. Come on, let's try it one more time. Call a friend, text a friend, tag a friend. Let them know that free will is on the air and invite them to come and be a part. Listen, the Word of God has already gone forward with our worship ministry, but there is more that God has in store. I thought, amen, at least half of y'all watching would have got excited about that that God has more in store for us. So listen, we want you to come and be a part, amen, of the services. So call a friend, text a friend, tag a friend, and let them know, amen, that free will is on the air. Listen, I want to give you just a few announcements. Uh, the first one is I want to remind you that on this Wednesday, uh, we're going to have the first of a two-part series uh, that we've entitled Get to Know the Pastor. Listen, I understand that I've served uh, this ministry many years ago. And since then, there's a lot of new faces uh, who have no idea who I am, and that's fine. Uh, and so what we've tried to do is take an opportunity uh, just for uh, a few questions to be asked of me, uh, just to learn a little bit about who I am, but more importantly, the vision that God has in store for this ministry. We have one of our own members, Lady D, uh, Sister D Whetstone, uh, who's joining us. Uh, to moderate, if you will, uh, that question and answer period. And so we pray that you join us on this Wednesday night uh, during the Bible study hour at 7 p.m. Just click on virtual worship, and we look forward to having you witness and be a part of that. Hey, I want to remind you, please, 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 ma'am, please, sir, make sure that as you are out and about that you are wearing your facial coverings, that you're wearing your mask. Again, uh, we know that our scientists and medical professionals and leaders have shared with us uh, that wearing masks have a tremendous impact on slowing the spread of this virus. And listen, we want to make sure that while we are operating in faith, that, that we also understand that wisdom is a part of faith. Amen, somebody. Uh, and so we want to make sure, then, again, that we're operating in the wisdom of those uh, who are at the forefront uh, of trying to to find cures and trying to find uh, things in, in order to help us uh, really make it to the other side uh, of this virus. So make sure that you're wearing your mask. I want to remind you, if you uh, are running low on masks, we still, I checked uh, this morning, have just a few prepackaged bags that have masks, gloves, and hand sanitizer. If you stand in need 
uh, of one of those prepackaged bags because you need additional masks or additional gloves or even additional hand sanitizer. I want you to reach out uh, to us here at the church. Give us a call first just to make sure that we can put one or a few aside for you. Uh, you can reach the church again uh, any day, Monday through Friday from 9 until 1 p.m. Somebody will be here. Evangelist Webster uh, will certainly receive your call and make sure that we put something aside for you. Hey, I want to remind you next Sunday, it's first Sunday. Uh, and on the first Sunday, you all know we celebrate and partake in the Lord's Supper Holy Communion. So I want to remind you uh, about that so that you can get your elements ready uh, and so that you can gather your family around the table so that together we partake in the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So listen, get your communion wine, your grape juice, uh, and some, some, uh, some sugarless or, 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 or very little sugar uh, type crackers. Set that aside, and next Sunday, the first Sunday in a brand new month in August, uh, we're going to come together around the Lord's table virtually to partake in the Lord's Supper. Two last announcement. Hey, guess what? Uh, we got an anniversary that's coming up. Whose anniversary? It's Free Will's uh, 55th. Come on, give God some praise for that. Free Will is turning 55 years old, established uh, back in 1965 here in 2020. Free Will is uh, going to get ready to celebrate 55 years of being on the wall and giving amazing service in and around the city of Montgomery. Listen, I am excited because we have an amazing team uh, led by uh, one of our usher sister, Diane Sanders, along with all of the ushers. Uh, they are putting together what I know will be an incredible virtual service for us to partake in. Listen, I want to remind you, you all remember, uh, we have a few ask, if you will, especially of all of our members, but we also know that we have many of our free will friends uh, who would definitely want to help us and support us and be a part. So more information will be coming out about that. We're going to try and develop some landing pages for you to go out to the web and learn more information. But listen, I'm excited. 55 years of doing great work. Uh, and le let me tell you this. We, we have 55 years behind us, but how many of you know that while God has blessed us tremendously in those 55 years, here it is, the best is still yet to come. I'm excited about that, and I pray, amen, that you are as well. Speaking of anniversaries, I got one more to tell you about. I'm going to be a little selfish right now uh, because on tomorrow, Monday, uh, July 27th, uh, my boo thing, yes, my baby girl, my bride, she and I will be celebrating 18 years of an amazing marriage. Amen. I'm excited about that. But can I tell you this? This is our anniversary weekend, but my wife and I got together and we said, you know what? For our anniversary, uh, we want to give free will a gift. Wait, catch it again. It's our anniversary, right? But we said for our anniversary, we want to give free will a gift. So here's what I need you to do. Don't log off because at the end of the message, we got a very special surprise, a very special gift that uh, my wife is going to come and join me uh, as we introduce and share with you all uh, this amazing gift that I promise you will bless you in an incredible way. Uh, it's going to happen again right after the message, so make sure that you stay tuned for that. Listen, it is time now to give. Come on and give God some praise for that. It's giving time. Listen, I remind you each week that giving is not a separate part of service, but giving is a part of worship. Amen, somebody. When we worship God, not only do we worship with the elevation of our hands and the lifting of our voices, but we also worship God in our giving as well. Uh, early part of last week, one of the members came by and she said, hey, Pastor Bird, uh, I I'm just uh, excited because I wanted to share some good news with you. She said, back in two 
2008, uh, when we went through the last financial crisis, she said, I don't know what happened, uh, but it seems like all of the people in my family lost their jobs. She said, I, I applied for, uh, for unemployment. She said, and somewhere uh, after uh, me applying and me getting that first check, she said, I heard the voice of God say, will you trust me? Isn't that a common theme? Didn't I tell y'all somebody else said that last week? It's a common theme. She said she heard the voice of God say, will you trust me? And she said from her unemployment check, she began to tithe. Watch this. She said ever since then, tithing has been a priority. She said, so when it came this time, when she's been watching people lose their jobs and people uh, like her friends and, and, and people that she knows, she said, can I tell you the blessing? Not one person in my household has lost their job. Y'all don't know a good place to shout right there. She said, e even my 16-year-old grandbaby still getting hours on her job. She said, and I know it's because we chose and we made a decision to do it God's way. Way. All I'm trying to tell you is this. While we operate in the world's economy, we, we, we follow the principles of God's economy. I need some believers and some people who's willing to trust God. Amen. Who's willing to believe the word of God is true. And the word of God simply says, test me, try me, see will I not open the window of heaven and pour you out blessings that you will not have room enough to receive. Maybe that's not your scripture. Okay, I got another one for you. Here's what he says. He says, give and it shall be given back. How? Not the same way you gave it, but when they give it back, it'll be pressed down, shaken together. Here's the shout running over. Come on, praise team. I need some believers and some witnesses. Amen. That God is not an ordinary God, but God gives out extraordinary blessings. But listen, I, I, I want to encourage you, if you are not a tither, I want to really encourage you to start there and trust that God will bless your seed because I promise for every seed time, there is always a harvest time and a reaping time. As you sow your seed, I encourage you to trust God and believe by faith that God is going to do exactly what it is that you need him to do. Listen, we got a number of ways that you can give. You can give uh, through electronic means. They're going to place it on the screen for you to see it. You can give through the app called Givelify. Uh, if you've never set it up, it's a secure way to give. It's convenient. That way you don't have to get in your car if you don't want to. Uh, you don't have to write a check if you ran out. That's fine. Uh, but you can give through the Givelify app. All you want to do is search for Free Will Missionary Baptist Church. You're going to see a picture of the outside of our building. That is one way that you can give. Another electronic way uh, that we have that you can give is through the Free Will Cash app. There it is. It's at the bottom of your screen. Search in the Cash app. That is a tremendous uh, way and a safe and secure way that you can give as well. But listen, you may say, hey, Bird, I told you I don't do all that electronic stuff. Okay, I got it. I hear you. Then we got something for you too. What do we have? You can stop by the church Monday through Friday uh, from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. and drop your offering off. Uh, remember, we are a mask-wearing campus. Praise the Lord, somebody. So make sure if you stop by that you have your mask on as you enter into the building. Uh, but listen, that is one of the ways that you can give. You can drop it off at the church. Or here's the last way that you can give. They're going to place at the bottom of the screen uh, our address, uh, 1724 Hill Street, Montgomery, Alabama, 36108. Listen, you can put your gift in the mail and bless us that way. Here it is. However you choose to give, know that we thank you. And here's the thing. Know that God will bless you for the gift of your giving. Amen, somebody. Listen, we're getting ready as you prepare your gift uh, to get ready for the Word of God. I'm so excited uh, about the Word of God today. I can hardly wait. But before we get to that, come on and let's receive our praise team. Amen. As they come and bless us in song one more time. Come on, praise team. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you know when we're at peace, we can think clear. Yes, 
Spirit of God would rest upon all of our hearts. Listen, I'm excited as we get ready to go into this last installment on this last Sunday of uh, a series that we have been in. We're going to go right back to our uh, theme scripture. Uh, it is the book of 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. Uh, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30. Uh, we're going to start reading at verse number 7. Uh, the book of 1 Samuel, 
30th chapter, starting at verse number 7. Hey, listen, if you have your Bibles, make sure you find it. If you have a Bible app, uh, perhaps it's on an electronic device. Uh, but here's what I'll tell you. If you can find it in none of those places, don't worry. We're going to put it on the screen. Amen. Amen. Listen, the book of 1 Samuel, 30th chapter, uh, we're going to begin reading at verse number 7, which is our foundational scripture uh, for our uh, theme. Uh, there you'll find these words. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them, pursue them? He answered, you will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Pick it up, drop down to verse number 16, and there you'll see this. And there they were scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking, and reveling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day. and None of them got away except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives, Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. Look at verse number 21. Then David came to the 200 men who uh, had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left behind at the Bessor Valley. They came out to meet David and the men with him. And David and his men, or as David and his men approached, he asked them how they were. But all, watch this, of the evil men, uh-huh, and troublemakers among David's followers said, because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and his children and go. Watch this. David replied, no, my brothers, you must not do that with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Who will listen to what you say? The share uh, is to go uh, to, for the men who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to battle, all will share alike. David made this statute and ordinance for Israel from that day to this. Last verse, number 26. When David reached Ziglag, he sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah who were his friends, saying, here is a gift for you from the plunder of the Lord's enemy." Amen. Amen. Over the past uh, few weeks, we've been in, <clears throat> excuse me, this series, uh, The Pursuit Going After Your Destiny. We started this series establishing that if, in fact, we're going uh, to uh, pursue destiny, uh, we must have, number one, we learned uh, in week one, we got to have strength for the start. Yeah. And, and then we said not only will you need strength for the start, but you'll also need faith for the journey. Okay? So, so not only do you need strength for the start and faith for the journey, but you will also have to have expectation to overcome the impossible. Yeah. And so, and so then, and so the, that, that was week one, two, and three, but for week four, uh, instead of me extending this uh, one additional week, because I promise you I can, I got a lot to say. I think y'all know that already. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to combine weeks four and five, and, and, and for today, here is what I want to talk about. Uh, in order to get destiny, in order for us to pursue destiny, not only do you need strength for the start, faith for the journey, uh, and expectation to overcome the impossible. Here it is, the last two things. You also need endurance to fight and a heart to give. Make sure you catch that. You need endurance to fight. 
You also need a heart to give. Come on, let's dive right in, because cause, cause, cause I'm going to be much shorter today, I promise. Y'all going to be like, so amazed, like, I, I never knew Bird could go that short. It's going to bless you. Okay, watch this. On last week, we learned that through the divine sovereignty of God, he providentially placed a man in David's path who led David and his men to the place where their enemy, the Amalekites, were camped. David saw the enemy and pursued uh, to go and get his stuff back. Wait, let me just throw this in. David had been praying, amen. Here is what I believe. I believe oftentimes God will answer a prayer with a person instead of just for a person. Did y'all catch that? Here is what he did. God answered the prayer by putting this man providentially in David's path. Catch this. David went, got his stuff back, all right? He did not just see the blessing, but he received the blessing. I gave an example last week of, of how my wife and I, we, we purchased a cell phone for my daughter, and, 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 and before we gave it to her, we showed it to her uh, as a means of developing anticipation and making sure that she was ready to receive it. We, 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 we wanted her to anticipate getting it, but not be anxious for it. Are y'all with me? Oh, okay, so, so, so when we anticipate, we get excited about the then while understanding and even appreciating the now. Y'all with me? Okay, okay. Uh, when you're anxious, you get so caught up on what's to come that you miss your moments of now. What is it that God is doing? What, what is it that God is saying? What is it that God is preparing you for in your now season? Here is the report. Here, here it is. Someone you will never get to your next until you deal with your now. Mm. Can, can, can you believe God? with anticipation for what he's going to do in your next, in the midst of what he's currently doing in your now. I could get excited about my tomorrow, but if I get too overly excited about my tomorrow, I might miss what God is doing in my today. Are you following me? David said, okay, okay, I can see it in my now, but I know I'm going to get it in my next. Okay, I, I don't want any of us to, 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 to take for granted the ability to get it because while we are believing God to get it, whatever your it may be, and while I am sure that for many of us, God will allow us to get what we see, there is also the reality that there will come a season in our lives when we will see some things that we cannot get. L li listen, listen, don't, 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 don't leave, don't leave. Stay with me, stay with me. Uh, in your now, you're going to find uh, that, that when our now will be no longer, each season of our life has its own design and its own purpose, all to help us walk in the destiny that God has in store for us. But true destiny is not just getting it for yourself. There will come a season when what you see will not be for you, rather for the generations that follow you. Here it is. If you can go everywhere you see, then perhaps you're not seeing far enough. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. For many of us, you'll find that when your destiny is fulfilled, that's the start of somebody else's destiny. Okay, okay, okay. Um, allow me to call a few witnesses. Um, uh, come here, Moses. The Bible says that, 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 that God took Moses to a high mountain and he allowed Moses to look over and see the promised land. He could see it, but he couldn't get it. Oh, okay, 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 Moses, top of the mountain. 
promised land, land flowing with, with, with milk and honey. Moses could see it, but God said it's not for you to get it. It's for the next generation, a young man by the name of Joshua. Okay, okay, uh, David. Okay, later on in David's life, uh, the, uh, uh, the text tells us uh, that David uh, saw the temple of God. While he saw it, and he even began the process of acquiring materials to build it, God said, hey, hey, Dave, hold on one minute, Dave, because while you can see it, it's not for you to get it. It's for the next generation, uh, your son by the name of Solomon. Okay, okay, I hear you said bird, but that's, that's all the people in the Bible. Okay, uh, I think it was April, uh, April 3rd, 1968, uh, a young preacher uh, 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 who, who um, led a movement, y'all might have heard of it, uh, it was called a civil rights movement. His name was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I know y'all heard of him. Uh, uh, April 3rd, 1968, at Mason Temple Church of God in Christ, uh, he got up and, and he delivered what we now know would be his last message and here's what he said he says I've been to the mountain and I've seen over and I've seen the promised land he said while I might not get there with you I promise that we as a people will get to the promised land Dr. King even understood that while God allowed him to see it it was not his to walk in What am I trying to tell you? Don't take for granted getting it because there will come a time, there will come a season in your life when you won't be able to get it, but don't be dismayed because God will bless you to see it as he empowers the next generation to get it. So watch this. Our purpose is today. David could see it Here it is, David could get it. Don't take that for granted. Here's the first thing I want you to see. Write this down, first point. I want you to know the difference between perusing and pursuing. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. When David gets to the battlefront, he sees the enemy and he sees that they are great in number. Their number is much larger than than he and his men. At this point, often when we see that the enemy is seemingly larger than we are, we tend to stop pursuing and start perusing. Okay, okay. To peruse is when you stop moving. Start trying to study the situation and develop your own strategy. Okay, okay, uh, um, so, 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 so I love my family, but um, a few of them, I ain't gonna say no names. Um, when we go to the store, uh, I go in uh, with a mission in mind. Get what I'm gonna get, get on out. I ain't got time to be uh, walking up. You know, my wife, anyway, we happy marriage. Let me not say that. Okay, so look, um, some people, when we go places, they, you know, want to stop and slowly walk and, you know, oh, look at that. Oh, let's read the whole, oh, we're going to read the whole thing. Oh, okay, all right. Not going to just skim it. Okay. Uh, they, they are perusing, if you will, the mall are perusing the store. And, and what happens uh, is that, see, 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 now I'm not just gonna, I'm not gonna blame it just on them because if I'm honest, I'm a planner. I like to plan things out. In my planning, uh, I'm thinking about the risk and I'm thinking about uh, the possibilities of what could go wrong. And then, uh, Junior, I'm developing a contingency plan on that. Uh, I'm trying to develop uh, timelines and strategies. But I found that there are times when God will shake me and say, it's not time for you to strategize. It's not time for you to plan and peruse. Now it's time for you to pursue. 
and go after what it is that you've been seeking, what it is that I've called you to. Some of you have been perusing, and God is saying, you got to stop perusing and start pursuing because the longer you take to get to what it is that I have for you, you put yourself in jeopardy of it not being there. You're, per, you're, you're, you're perusing if, if you're trying to figure it out, uh, but you're pursuing if you know that God has already worked it out. You're perusing if, if you're trying, but you are pursuing if you're trusting. I need a man for at least half of y'all watching to make up in your mind. I've been meandering around long enough, but it's time for me to get from where I am. I've been hanging around this valley long enough. I've been around these people long enough. I told y'all a few weeks ago, you got to ask yourself and ask the people around you, are you eagles or are you crows? You keep hanging with people that's God designed to be temporary people. Why? Because they are holding you back from getting to what it is that God has for you. I wonder if you would make up in your mind that today is my last day to parade rules tomorrow I'm gonna start pursuing watch this here it is David David is at the battlefront and he sees that the enemy is in front of him and that they are spread out which means that they are out of formation because they were not expecting David and his men to pursue after them. David looked and he saw that the enemy was larger in size than he was. How do you know that? I'm glad you asked. The text says that some 400 of the enemy men got away. Well remember it was only 400 of David and his men but the Bible says that some 400 got away which gives us indication that the enemy was much larger than David and his men wait because I want you to see this how many of you have gotten so close to your breakthrough to your deliverance to your blessing to your destiny but when you look and it seemingly seemed as if the enemy was larger you tucked and ran The task is more than you thought that it would be. The burden is larger than you could handle. The problem is a giant that's the size of Goliath. Here is the shout. When you can look at your big problem and not flinch because you understand that you serve a God that's bigger than any problem you could ever have. Here it is, here it is, David. David did, 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 did not get deterred. He did not get distracted. He was determined because he knew he had a destiny. He didn't peruse. He and his men pursued. That was point number one. Come on, I gotta go. Point number two, here it is. Here it is. Uh, look at verse number 17. Verse number 17 says that after David saw all of this, that David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day. Day. Here it is. Write it down. Endure the fight until the blessing is in your hand. <laughs> Wait, did you catch that? You got to endure the fight until the blessing is in your hands. David saw the enemy and began to fight. Sometimes to get to your destiny, you ain't going to be able to get it by pity patting around. Sometimes you got to take it by force. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, uh, the old church used to say, God don't want no coward soldiers. Uh, we, we need some people who's willing and ready to go into battle, right? God says, listen, David began to fight, but the writer was very particular in indicating uh, that they fought from dusk until the evening of the next day. Here it is. Watch this. You may be in battle for a while, but the text says, is that they started fighting one day and didn't finish fighting until the next day. 
sometimes God will allow your battle to be longer than you like or longer than you are anticipating. Wait, because it don't get no better. On top of that, uh, what happened is that the writer says that they began to fight at the start of dusk. Catch this. Dusk. Is, 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 is in two forms. Dust in its verb form, which shows action, would usually indicate the transition from day until night. But then dusk in its adjective form is a description and literary symbolism referring to something that's shadowy, that's dim, and that's dark. So here it is. When, when, when the text says that they started fighting from dusk until the evening of the next day, not only is it talking about the physical environment of the sun going down it's also talking about the emotional baggage that they have been carrying a feeling like they are now in a dark place y'all ain't gonna pray with me remember their wives have been taken their children have been taken and so they have been crying until they could cry no more they're in a dark place can I talk to somebody this morning is dark because your family is under attack. It's dark because your children are under attack. It's dark because your finances are under attack. It's dark because your mind is under attack. It's dark because your body is under attack. It's dark because your character is under attack. It's dark because your ministry is under attack. But in the midst of a dark season, God said, fight. Wait, here it is, here it is. Not only did God say fight, but we see that they had to stay in battle for as long as it took. Sometimes I know you looking for God to give you a suddenly blessing, but sometimes you got to tarry. Why? It ain't because God is trying to destroy you. It's simply that God is saying if you can hang in there, there's something on the other side. Here is the shout. When you understand, no matter how long your battle may be, here is the shout. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. What did that mean? Listen, I ain't fighting to get the victory. God said I already have it. I need y'all to give God some praise right up and through in there. You fighting, thinking that the enemy gonna take you out. No! Remember the promise that God gave you. You shall overtake your enemy and you shall get your stuff back. Here it is, here it is, here it is, watch this. How would you fight if you knew the fight was already fixed? <laughs> okay, okay, how would you fight if you knew that God said no matter what, you win? <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I, I hear you saying, all right, bird, well, well, how do I fight? Here it is, 2 Corinthians for the weapons of our warfare. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, are not carnal, but mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. What does that mean? If it doesn't look good, your praise is your fight. When it doesn't sound good, your worship is your fight. When, 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 when folks spread in rumors and lies on you, every hallelujah is your fight. Every thank you, Jesus, is your fight. I wonder if you don't mind going to battle just one minute, hallelujah, glory to God, thank you Jesus, just say his name, Jesus, Je demons are trembling, Jesus, 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 demons are fleeing, why? Because at the name of Jesus, that's fighting right there, here it is, here it is, here is the, here is the next thing, when you fighting, you need to understand who it is or what it is that you're fighting. Hang on. I ain't got time to fight folk. 
I ain't got time for all that. Mm -mm, nope, I don't. Um, let me just be real clear. Um, a a as your new pastor, here's my promise. I'll fight the devil, every demon in hell, for your soul and your salvation. That's my commitment. Let me tell you what I won't do. I ain't about to fight, I mean, you know, people. I, mm -mm, I, mm -mm. I ain't got time for all that, right? Listen, listen. I learned a long time ago. People can be fickle. People can, can, can change with the wind. Jokers will be with you today and talking about you, mm -mm, not tomorrow. In the next 32 seconds. I don't know why I came for 32, just random. It don't matter. Here's what I learned. I ain't got time to fight people. The problem is too many of us are fighting each other. And here is what's happening. The enemy is standing back with a smile on his face. Why? Because you're fighting each other. But I'm reminded somewhere over in the book of Ephesians, it says, for our struggles are not against flesh and blood. But they are against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. I ain't got time to fight you. I'm too busy fighting the spirits and the devils that the enemy are throwing our way. Here it is, number one. I'm almost finished. Look at that. I told y'all fast. Okay, watch. Number one. You got to know the difference between perusing and pursuing. You got to get up from where you are. Stop, stop, stop slow poking around. Slow poking. That's an old word right there. Stop slow poking around and start moving in the direction that God has told you to move. Number two, you got to endure the fight until the blessing is in your hand. I don't know how long it's going to take. I know you sitting there, God, how long am I going to have to deal with this? How long am I going to have to go through this? Here is a man, your answer. Uh, uh, how long? Uh, not long, but no matter matter how long it is, you ought to be all right knowing that God is with you and that he has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. So here it is. Know the difference between perusing and pursuing. Number two, endure the fight until the blessing is in your hand. Number three, watch this. Now that you have the blessing, you got to be the blessing. Bible said David and his men recovered everything. Come on, say everything. Uh, say, say it like you mean it. David and his men recovered everything. Say everything. See, that ought to give you a shout right there because you've been sitting here, amen, uh, wondering if you're going to get your stuff back. Can I give you amen? I, this not in my notes, but I'm going to throw it in there. When, when the Bible says that David and his men recovered everything, not only did they get all of their stuff, but they got all the stuff that the enemy had. Y'all don't know a good place to shout. When you pursue the enemy, not only will you get what that joker took from you, but you're going to get your stuff plus interest. Y'all don't know a good place to shout. Come on, Junior, that's a good place to give it to him. God is not only going to give you your stuff, but God is going to allow you to take back from the enemy everything he stole from you, everything he stole from your mother, everything he stole from your mother mother, everything he stole from your daddy, everything he stole from your family, everything God is going to give you your stuff back here it is, here it is but watch this, watch this, I'm finished I'm finished, I'm finished uh -uh. now that you have it what you going to do with it <laughs> look at verse number 24 here's what David said the share of the man, of the men who stayed with the supplies, watch this, is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All will share alike. All right, okay, okay, see, see, I know, I, I heard some of y'all just tuned right out right there because y'all like, hold up, hold on, hold on, little Reverend, uh, wait. Some people had a problem with this. They thought, why would we spend so much time in battle just to come back and give it to somebody who didn't go? Here it is. When the fight is fixed, the blessing 
doesn't just flow to you. The blessing flows to you and through you. Y'all missed it. Okay. When the fight is fixed, the blessing does not simply flow to you. But the blessing flows to you and then through you. So that now, not only are you blessed, but you now have the ability to be a blessing. Hang on, because I need you to be careful about people in your camp who will try to block you from being a blessing. <laughs> y'all missed it. Some of y'all got some friends in your camp. I wouldn't give it to nobody. If that was me, I would, I would keep it up. Mm-mm. Them crows. Them not eagles. <laughs> Why? Because an eagle understands that the more I give, the more he gives, y'all don't know when to shout, the more he gives to me. And so despite the opposition of men and David show kindness, destiny is not when you can get it for yourself. Destiny is when you can get it and then be able to be a blessing to somebody else. David received it. Then David released it. Here it is. He understood that this blessing was a temporary blessing. Okay. Um, sometimes God will give us a temporary blessing to see how we'll handle it and to see if we're ready to receive the greater blessing. Okay, y'all missed it. Okay, okay, okay. This was a temporary blessing because God understood that if David could handle the temporary blessing, there was a greater blessing that was in store for him. Okay, okay. David is running from King Saul now. In a few chapters, King Saul going to die and David is going to be elevated to king. Y'all missed a good place. Okay. God is saying, can you handle this blessing right here? Because if you can handle this blessing, I got something on the other side that I've already have in store for you. If, if you can handle receiving and then releasing, now your hands are not closed. Because as long as your hands are closed, I cannot put anything in your hands because you won't let nothing come out your hands. Y'all missed a good place to shout. God is looking to see if you can be a blessing, but the only way you can be a blessing is that you cannot have closed hands. You got to have open hands. Why? Because what God is saying is that if you can receive it, but if you can release it, there's even more that I have in store for you. Here it is. I'm done. Play softly. I told y'all, look at that. 32 minutes. I'm timing myself. Never been this short. I'm going to move on. Here we go. To get to your destiny, I believe, I declare and I decree it, that the word of God is that you got to move. You got to move because your destiny awaits you. Wait, because I need you to catch this. Destiny itself cannot be abandoned, but you can abandon your journey to get there. Destiny gonna always be destiny. <laughs> the question is, will you pursue to get it. This series, The Pursuit, Going After, this is an action series. It's not intended for you to stay stagnant. It's intended for you to get up and move. 
Here it is. You got to have strength for the start. It's not your strength. The Bible says that David found strength in the Lord. You got to have faith for the journey because even when you don't know where you're going, your faith is in the one who's sending you. That God will lead you, God will direct you, God will give you everything that you need to make it to where it is he's calling you to be. You got to have anticipation and expectation to overcome the impossible. Slave man who thought he would never be free. Uh Uh-uh, nope, there's an opportunity. Freedom was his. But because of his freedom, he now also allowed David and his men to find the enemy that has stolen their stuff. David goes down. Bible says he began to fight. Started fighting at dusk one day. Didn't stop fighting till the evening of the next day. You got to endure the fight. Because if you can hang in there, God's promise has already been declared and decreed. You're going to get your stuff back. Not only do you have to endure, but when you get it, all your stuff. It really is true that it is more blessed to give than to receive. You got to have a heart to give. Give love. Give kindness. Give out of the abundance that you are seeking and that God has promised he will give to you. Listen, it is my prayer that you have been blessed. It is my prayer that this series has spoken to you right where you are. But here's what I want to do because I also understand that there are some of you here that may be watching us. You've not received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I dare not go any further without extending an opportunity for you to know God for yourself. Maybe you've received him, but maybe you don't have a church home. To you, we extend our hearts and our hands to come and be a part of this ministry. We'd love to have you here. If you fall within either of those categories, or if you stand in need of prayer, they're going to place an email address on the screen. I encourage you to email us. I've been calling people who email us each week. I'd love to connect with you, to celebrate with you, to pray with you about an incredible decision that God desires you to make right now. Listen, I told you at the top of the service that we have a special gift just for you. My wife is going to come and join us. I am super excited uh, on this, our anniversary Sunday. Uh, We celebrate, amen, 18 years of an incredible marriage uh, on tomorrow. Amen. Thank you. Uh, On tomorrow, uh, July 27th, uh, and we are just so honored and so blessed uh, to be here uh, with our free will family and our free will friends uh, to celebrate again just an incredible life and just uh, celebrate what God has done and what God is continuing to do in and through our lives. And so one of the things that we wanted to do, I have an amazing friend. Uh, She is uh, an amazing gospel artist. Uh, I I tell her, and I joke, she's the OG. Uh, She is the original winner uh, of season one, Sunday's Best. Uh, She is uh, an award-nominated, award-winning gospel artist. uh, And she, amen, uh, is, is joining us to be a blessing to you 
on today. She's not here live just because we're practicing uh, social and physical distancing, but she said, hey, Pastor Q, whatever I need to do, if I got to take my cell phone and record some stuff, that's what I'll do. I just want to celebrate you and Consuela, and I also want to celebrate the Free Will family. So right where you are, Amen. I'm excited. And my wife, I just gave y'all kind of a teaser, but my wife, go ahead and tell them who she is. Let us receive Pastor Crystal Aiken. Amen. Receive her now. Good morning, Free Will Missionary Baptist Church. What's up, everybody? It's Crystal Aiken here, and I am here to send love to two wonderful people on their anniversary. I love you all. You all are a phenomenal ministerial team. But listen, Free Will Missionary Baptist Church, you're getting a great team. And I pray that you all go forward together as a family. Be blessed out there in Montgomery. We love you here in Birmingham. And Pastor Quentin did say that Even Me was one of his great songs that he heard from my album. So I'd like to bless you with that today.
Listen, were you not just blessed? Amen. Did she not sing something amazing and just bless our hearts tremendously? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Pastor Crystal, talk about a jewel. Uh, talk about, amen, one of God's best. Thank you so much uh, for blessing us, uh, Pastor Crystal. Listen, here is what I want to tell you. Uh, we, we, we slowed it down, uh, but right after I finished praying, we, we're going to bring her right back because she got a few extra minutes. The spirit moved uh, on her and those ladies uh, who's there with her, one of the other ladies. Uh, Pastor April Joy is also a recording artist. Uh, uh, also, amen, one of the worship leaders, uh, um, uh, Talia, is there. Uh, I didn't know that Pastor Krista was going to get a team, but she got a team, and uh, they did an amazing job. So thank you all so very much. Listen, I pray that you have been blessed uh, not only by her ministry of song, uh, I know that you have been blessed by our own praise and worship team. Come on and give God some praise for them. They've blessed us on today. Uh, and listen, I pray that you have been blessed by the word. Listen, Consuela and I, we're going to go. Uh, our children, they don't know it, but we're going to make them do everything this weekend. Praise the Lord, because uh, it's our anniversary, and we just going to chill and, and do nothing. Praise the Lord. Somebody ought to give God some praise for just doing nothing sometimes. Amen. I don't, don't get too, okay. Amen. <laughs> Listen, God bless you all. God God, keep you. We always encourage you to never leave uh, before the final prayer. It's the prayer of blessing. It's the prayer of covering. So right where you are, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, God, we thank you. God, we bless you. God, we appreciate all that our eyes have seen and all that our ears have heard. God, we thank you that we felt your presence in our this place, wherever this place is, whether it's in the sanctuary or even in our homes or wherever we may be viewing this, this broadcast, God, we thank you that your spirit is here. Now, God, you've called us to destiny. You've called us to get up and move. You've called us to pursue. God, we lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. We, we, we put aside everything that may try and, and cause us to be distracted from getting to what it is that you have for us. But right now, God, we've made up in our minds that destiny is not just our future. Destiny, it's our now. So now, God, move by your spirit, move by your power. We speak your favor. We speak your covering. We speak your blessings over all of those who are not only watching, but for everyone that's connected to them as well. God, we bless you, we honor you, and we thank you. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, free will. Have an amazing week.
Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through.